In this demonstration, we're going to show you how BAE can be used in order to support a budget planning process with multiple business units, multiple departments, and multiple sets of information for both cost and revenue that's being captured across the business. This is a fairly typical planning process that you might see where you've got calendar your actuals, plan, a gap, um, you've, got a f you've got formulas inside of Excel that's doing the calculation. And then you've got this column or this row called adjustments, because the idea here is that you've got a plan that you're already set up for the year with, but as you go through the year, you want to be able to collect adjustments from the different business units, the business, different departments around cost and revenue adjustments against the plan, and then have those show up over here and then have management have the ability to go in and say, well, you know, these are the numbers that have come up from the adjustment, but I'm going to make a further offset or a further increase, and then have the approved forecast be pushed back into the system of record, in this case an Oracle environment, for example, such that as you're going through the process, you're constantly able to iterate with the information that's involved in the process. Now, one of the things about BAE is the ability to integrate with multiple systems, and you'll see that <coughs> when we go in and start working with it, um, and also to support multiple people interacting with the data at the same time. So as you can see here, there's multiple business units, there's multiple departments, but instead of emailing spreadsheets around, you're able to use the database in order to say, I have a number of users that are interacting with this data, but I want people only to see specific information. So in this case, I'm saying Planner 1 should only see the data that's associated with Business Unit 1. And likewise, somebody in Finance should only see the data that's associated with Approved Forecast. So you can have any number of columns associated with different elements of the data you're working with inside of a workbook and say, for these users, I want them to be able to see or not see specific information based on this access control. So in that respect, it works very much like an auto filter. Um, there's also a pick list in here where you can control information in terms of the categories for the data, so it lines up with the ERP. And then you also have a full reporting capability, which is inside of Excel, where you can very quickly see, am I having issues with margin across different departments or different areas, uh, and exactly what's going on. But the real key is, you know, how do you collect data from multiple people. So here I'm manager one. I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to go back in um, as a planner and say, okay, let's take a look at what planner one may see. And planner one, in this case, if I look at it, only sees the data associated with business unit one and only sees the data for department one, department two, which is associated with business unit one. And that's because of the access control capability means that in this particular view, even though there be there are many, many more rows inside the database, it's sliced such that the person who's responsible for this data only sees their rows. So the way it starts is you want to make sure that the person that's doing the planning has the most recent data. So when they open up the workbook, if they open it up the first time, they will see a welcome sheet, which is basically means the whole template's blank. And when they download the template, it'll pull in all the most recent information. But then once you have it on your desktop, you can come in and say, well, refresh my data. And when you refresh, it says, well, who are you? So then I log in as business planner. And then it's going to look at the database in the back end and say, you know, have there been any changes that I need to have? Well, yeah, actually, here it is. It shows me that the updated costs have come in from the back end system for this month. And actually, more costs have been allocated against my department. And it's gone from you know 1.475 million to 1.476. So without having to do any cutting and pasting, all the most recent information is available inside the workbook. Um, you can also see here that formulas are being shared directly through our database. So you don't have to program formulas into an enterprise application. You can use ones that you have inside of Excel. And for different departments, like in this case, it's the same calculations for cost as we go from department to department. But if you need to have additional rows for overseas or a different group, you simply add them inside the Excel spreadsheet, and they'll only show up for that group, but they'll be inside the database. So now that I have the most recent information, well, I can go and make some adjustments. So I'm going to say, um, let's make a change here and say, you know, more updates. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and change this to be, you know, 4,000. 
Um, and then, you know what, over here I've got a formula. I'm going to change this formula and say, you know what, I want to make this be 10% higher than the month before instead of 20%. Um, and I'm also going to go ahead and insert a new row. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say boardwalk, uh, copy a row uh, below the selection. So then it's going to copy this one and just put it in here. You can see it's added a new row. When I hover over it, it shows me what it's done. And I'm going to say, yeah, this is a cost, um, but it's actually um, some uh, new project. And I'll say uh, this is new for systems, for example, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and clear this data, and I'm just going to put some, some values out here for $1,500. Now, what's important to note about this is that I'm doing copying and pasting. I'm doing everything that you're used to inside of Excel, and it's not until you click on Submit that the data is pushed back to the server. But it is updating all the information locally here, so you're able to take a look at the data and say, you know, based on the view of the information that I have locally, you know, how am I doing? You know, are there any issues with the types of changes I've made? But when you're ready to share, you come in and you say, okay, I want to submit this. And when I submit it, you say, these are my updates. And we even have a thing called a critical update. And a critical update is something that can be done at a system level to force everybody else to have to refresh their changes before they can submit. But I've now done this change as planner one. So I'm going to go back over and say, well, let's take a look and see what, what the manager sees. Right, so now we'll go back to Manager 1, which is where we started, and I'll come over here and I'll say, well, let's refresh the sheet. So Manager 1 sees all of the data from all the different department planners, but Planner 1 has just done those changes, so when I say refresh, without having to do any copying and pasting, I'm able to see the data come in. So here's the new row, right? and then here's the change that I did here, and then as I scroll over here, I can see the change that I did here and then I can also see over here so here's this change where the formula was changed now every update that's done is indicated by this little change icon so I'll zoom in a bit here more so you can see that if you had been working over here for example then when you refreshed your data would not be lost nor would if you refreshed in from multiple business units if they all added rows they would all show up all the consolidation happens automatically if you had made a change to a cell that somebody else had changed, but you had not submitted, then you can set it up so a conflict manager will pop up and say, hey, you know, the value on the server was this, you're about to change it, but somebody else has changed it, so ultimately what value do you want to put in? And the key point to that is that for a given cell, so if I go back to this cell and I say, show me the history of this, there's a single version of the truth now for the data. And I can click on that at any time, at any cell, and say, hey, show me how this has changed over time and who's done the changes. So you can see here, this is the most recent change that I did for my cell um, to make this into a 1.1 you know, instead of 1.2. And you can control who can change what and whether they're able to add rows, delete rows, add columns, change formulas. But everything that's being done is being tracked. And in fact, if I go and say, show me a history of this table, which is, means this entire adjustments sheet, then I could have 20 people working on this. And every time somebody makes a change, what the system's doing is it's tracking to say, did they add rows, delete rows, update cells? And you can go back and say, well, you know what? I want to see what this person did on the 12th, or I want to be able to compare update slices. But on demand, you can recreate the database as of any time, and it'll show you exactly what that person did at that time and any of these slices can be pushed off to external systems like click and tableau any reporting system but always the boardwalk system has the most recent data available for you in your desktop um, when you do a refresh and then by virtue of refreshing in fact you know i got to go ahead and refresh this one as well because there was the change to the the actuals that we saw when we came in on the other data set um, then that shows up. And you can make it so that when you do refresh, everything gets updated at the same time. But now I'm able to make my adjustment here, and then this information can get pushed back. So this is an example of using the Boardwalk Application Engine to support a scenario or a use case where you're going through and doing budget adjustments and um, collaboration around changes to the budget. Thank you.